Welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to solar and solar plus storage industries. And today I'm gonna to focus in on 705.11 in the 2023 National Electrical Code. And this one's interesting to me. Uh, well, one, 2023, there were some changes and this was a, a an issue that came up working with one of our um, clients that we you know, we do um, consulting with and you know they were faced with this problem and so we really had to jump in and tackle this and so it was on the surface when you look at the code changes in 23 might not see this and so it was really interesting to see you know how far we had to jump in and really dive in to kind of understand what these requirements are what we're really up against now so the idea is around the length of the conductors. So for those of you familiar with 705.11 in the 2020 code, we had some limitations on length of our conductors for our supply side connections. And what you'll see if you go and read the, the 2023 languages now that, that those are gone. And so now we have to figure out, well, what are, what are we left with? So let's jump in and look at some of that code language. I'll show you a picture towards the end um, but it's really helpful, I think, just to kind of focus in on this code language first. And so the question that came up originally was, well, 2023 changed and 703, excuse me, 705.11F is overcurrent protection. In 2020, if you're looking to, you know, make a compare and contrast here, 2020 that was in uh, subsection C. And so it was overcurrent, prote it was still overcurrent protection, but it was in subsection C. And that was where we would find that we had this limitation of 10 feet um, or, um, or 70 feet, depending on commercial versus residential applications. And so in 23, it gets moved to F. And you'll see here that it just says, you know, power production source service conductors shall be protected with overcurrent in accordance with part seven of article 230. And so this is what you're and then it goes on to talk about you know depending on the ampacity you might have to have ground fault protection as well that's really what that's talking about with the 230.95 so um we get a reference to part seven and part seven in 230 is service equipment over current protection and that's sections 230.90 to 230.95 so you know it's at the very end of 230 is where you're going to find that so it's interesting because if you go and you read this now, uh, the very first thing you do is in 230.90, it tells you where it's required, where overcurrent protection is required, since that's the this part that's, you know, it's titled overcurrent protection. And the very first thing you read here is each ungrounded service conductor shall have overload protection. And so I found it quite interesting. It's talking about overload protection there. So if you go to article 100, there's a definition for overload. And that's talking about equipment uh, operating in, uh, excess, in excess of its normal rating or a conductor in excess of its ampacity that which in, um, when it persists could actually damage the conductor or have dangerous overheating. And then actually in this definition of overload, it says a fault such as a short circuit or ground fault is not an overload. So it's just interesting kind of how they're differentiating between those. And if you have the handbook or if you have the NFPA link and read the enhanced content there in section 230.90, it goes on to talk about how ground fault protection and short circuit protection is provided by the installation of our service conductors um, and that this overcurrent device is providing purely overload um, functionality. So just kind of an interesting thing to, to put into context for these uh, overcurrent protection devices. So moving on, you go into 230.91, and it says, you know, this disconnect, the overcurrent device shall be integral to the service disconnecting means or located directly adjacent to. And then it just goes on to say, if the fuses are used as the service overcurrent device, you have to have the disconnecting means ahead of those, meaning if you pull that service disconnect, if you pull that switch down, that the fuses are not energized in the off position, so you'd be able to remove those fuses uh, and be able to service them is really what they're what they're getting at there. 
So you read through that and you see that, you know, it talks about it's required that we have to have overload protection and the location of these overcurrent devices, but it doesn't tell us in terms of reference to, you know, how far away they are or anything like that, like it used to in 2020 code. So with that, you're kind of left, you know, looking for a little bit more, if you will, within code. And so one of the things is, to go look at 705.11d, which is system service disconnecting means. And so this is, you know, another place to look, you know, maybe we're gonna get some information on distance here on the disconnecting means. Again, it points us back to 230. It says part six and part seven of 230 is where we're gonna have to look at for, for these disconnecting means. And so we go to part six, we just looked at part seven. Part six is service equipment disconnecting means. And so that's you know what we're going to be left with here. And if you look at, go through and read that 230.70a talks about the location, and it needs to be in a readily accessible location. And so you know either outside the building or structure or inside the nearest point of entrance for the service uh, conductors. Um, A2 and A3. A2 is talks about um, you know can't have them in bathrooms. A3 talks about remote control of these disconnecting means. So really what we're kind of left with is this, you know, there's no code requirement and there's no code restriction on the length of those conductors. And so, you know, the disconnect just has to be in a readily accessible location. The overcurrent protection needs to be an integral with that disconnect or it needs to be adjacent, directly adjacent to. And so the, you know, the, the last thing to look at, I would say, uh, in this situation is in the handbook, there's some explanatory material. So it's not part of code. So the explanatory material is, is exactly that. It's just there to help kind of give more color, help give some uh, guidance on what the code requirements are. And so in the handbook, we have this relatively long paragraph uh, explaining what's going or what the requirements or allowances, if you will, are for these locations. And you see right there, the very first sentence, no maximum distance between the point of entrance of service conductors to a readily accessible location for the installation of a service disconnecting means is specified. Goes on, I won't read it all to you, but you can read it there. Goes on basically just saying that it's the AHJ has the authority to determine what's excessive in this case. And so, you know, if you are installing a, in this case, you know, installing it, let's say just a straight grid PV system, and you're doing a supply side connection or source connections as they're called now in 705.11, then the distance from that connection point to those conductors to that first disconnecting means then overcurrent protection, it's really between you and the AHJ to figure out how far those away, how far away those can be from each other. And so, you know, the idea being it's saying in there, you know, not excessive, or you know, the AHJ is responsible for deciding, you know, how far they can travel. Um, it even goes into talk about, you know, you want to limit them inside the building since they're not protected. And this all kind of gets back to that situation talking about in 230.90, talking about the overload requirement or the overload protection. So, you know, that's really the, the, the um, function for these overcurrent devices is that overload feature. So, um, so all in all, you know, if you can keep it to those lengths that were in 2020, that's great. That's awesome. If anything, in 2023, we've given our, we've been allowed, you know, greater distances. Again, just working with your AHA to figure out what's considered excessive, what would be appropriate for that installation. So here's that image I told you I was going to show you. So in the 2020 version of code, we had this same type of, uh, graphic and we had a distance so we would show you know depending on residential or commercial we would have a maximum distance between those between that supply side connection and that pv system disconnect again that's that's gone now in 23 so just keep that in mind when you're working with this and so it may be a conversation with your hj make sure that they see it as well as you do in terms of you know where that location is and that it's considered close enough to that point of connection. Okay, so that wraps up those the discussion around the, the conductor length. 
you know, if you're looking for more resources on NEC or fire codes, we cover this and other code related topics in our solar plus storage classes. Those are available online at our website. They're pre recorded and self paced. They're also available with NABSEP credits. So if you want to learn more about those, I would encourage you to visit our website at mayfield.energy. And then finally, if you have questions or comments on this or other code corners, or there's other topics you'd like to see us talk about, you know, feel free to reach out and send us an email or give us a call.